Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now going to answer question number five from the May June 2020 IGCSE Cambridge um, paper four variant two. This question here is about trigonometry, and it was requested by one of the viewers for me to answer. So I'm going to go through this question. Uh, this question here tells us about a field. This diagram is representing a field which is not to scale, um, A, B, C, D. And they told us that the bearing of B from A is 140 degrees, and C is due east of B, and D is due north of C. And they've told us that the length from A to B is 400 meters, and from B to C is 350 meters, and from C to D is 450 meters. We've got to find the bearing of D from B. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to draw a straight line that joins together B and D. I'm going to join B and D together with a straight line. Okay, and then because we have to find the bearing of B from D, now, for, for three-figure bearings, the letter after the word from is where you measure the angle for the bearing. That's where you have to measure or find the angle, calculate the angle from that point. And the, the bearing is always measured from the north line. So at B, I'm going to draw a north line. At B, I'm going to draw a north line. Okay, so there's a north line at B. And basically, the bearing is always measured from the north line at that point, And it's always measured in the clockwise direction until you're facing the point you have to face. So if I want to find the bearing of, of D from B, I've got to draw the north line at B. Then from, from that north line, going clockwise, I measure the angle until I'm facing D. So I've got to find out what this angle is here. Now, this angle, I'm going to call it theta. Now, to find this angle, I can use the fact that C, D is due north of C, and C is due north of B. So that basically, due, C is due east of B, sorry. Okay, so if C is due east of B, the bearing of C from B is 90 degrees. So this angle is 90 degrees. Okay, this is 90 degrees from there. If that's the bearing of B from C is 90, the bearing of, the, this is also 90 degrees. So this is 90, this is also 90. Uh, um, we also know that D is due north of C, all right, so that this, this angle here is 90 degrees, so this is a north line. So this line and this line are parallel, these are both north lines, which means that this angle is the same as that angle is there, because they're alternate angles. Okay, they make this Z shape, alternate angles. These are parallel lines, this is north, this is north. Okay, so we can therefore say, um, we can therefore say that as these two lines are parallel, okay that this angle and these are the same so i can find this angle using the fact that this is a right angle triangle as i said this is right angle because i know that c is due east of b and d is due north of c so there must be a right angle here north meets, meets east at 90 degrees so i can find this angle theta by using trigonometry okay i can use trigonometry to find this angle theta so i can say that the tangent of theta is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So tan of theta is 350 over 450. So I'll write, I'll write the steps over here. So I can say the tan of theta is equal to the opposite 350 over the adjacent 450 using right angle triangle trigonometry. So theta is equal to the inverse tan of 350 divided by 450. And that will give me the angle theta so inverse tan of 350 over 450. That gives me 37.874 or 875, you can say 37.875 degrees. Okay, that's the angle theta. Now we want to find the bearing. Okay, we want to find the bearing. Let me just move the steps down here. Okay, so the bearing is always given to three figure is always a three figure value. So therefore here we have to put zero three and we always round it to the nearest degree. So zero three eight degrees. The bearing is zero three eight degrees. That's the bearing 
of uh, D from B. So there's the answer to part A. Now we're going to go on to part B. Okay, now for part B of this question number five. This question here, um, part B, we're asked to calculate the distance from D to A. The distance from the point D to the point A in this um, diagram here. Now, there's a couple of ways of, of doing this, actually. Um, one of the ways we could do this, if you find the distance from A to D, is to use a triangle ADB. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll just highlight that triangle. Okay, we could use the triangle ADB, which is this triangle here. One second, let me just... Come on. So it's this triangle here, ADB. Sorry about that, hold on. Okay. So that triangle over there, if we consider this triangle, um, we know one side, this side AB. We also can find BD using Pythagoras and this right angle triangle. And I know this angle is 37.875. And I know that this part of the angle here, this part of the angle here is the same as this, well, not the same. It is basically can be found because this is a north line. This is 140. And this angle here must be 180 minus 140. So this must be 40 degrees. So we can find the total angle here. This, this whole angle from there to there is going to be 40 plus theta. So it's 40 plus 37.875. So that's going to be 77.875 degrees. That's the angle there. So we have the angle from there to there. So in this triangle, we know this side. We can find this side. So if we know two sides and the angle between the two sides, we can use the cosine rule. And we know that the cosine rule is given by the formula a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc times the cosine of a, where the small a is the side you're trying to find, and the, the big a is the angle opposite that side, and we have to have the other two sides, which are b and c. Now, the, that side that we're looking for here is this side over there, bd. So I can find what BD is. I can say BD is equal to the square root of um, 350 squared plus 450 squared. 350 squared plus 450 squared. That's going to give me what BD is. So we can work out what that is. That's using Pythagoras' theorem. So 350 squared plus 450 squared. That gives us 50 times root 130. That's 50 times the square root of 130. So that's that length over there. 50 times root 130. Okay, so we've got that length. We've got these two, this angle. And we have this side. So we can now use the cosine rule. So we can say that AD is therefore the square root of... You can have 400. So it's 400 squared. That's a B squared plus C squared. Let's call that C. So that's going to be... 50 times root 130, all squared, minus 2 times 400, times 50 times root 30, 130, times the cosine of the angle 77.875. So here we have, um, this will give us a length AD, which is what we're looking for. So we take our calculator and we put the square root of 400 squared plus put this in a bracket 50 times root 130 squared minus 2 times 400 times 50 root 150 50 times the square root of 130 times the cosine of 
Okay, have that to a higher degree of accuracy than needed. And press equals, and that gives us 623.862. Okay, or 863, you could say. 623.8629, whatever, it continues like that. So the answer is going to be rounded to 3SF 624 meters. There's the answer to 3SF. We should round to 3SF unless otherwise stated. Okay, so there's the answer for part B. That's one way of doing it. There's also another way of doing it, which I'll show you. Okay, which we can also do. I mean, the way that I've shown you first is, I think, the way that's intended. Because in part A, they ask us to find the, this angle, this bearing, which was 37.875. And this is how we can use that alongside with this side of this angle here from this um, 140. Um, we can use that to use a cosine rule, but there's, supposing they didn't tell us to find the bearing of D from B, and they just simply said, if, if this was a question, uh, find the length AD from this diagram. Um, you, you probably wouldn't think of that, although I guess it's possible, but you might not think of that method, but there's another method we could use, and that is we could basically, um, as I'll show you now, we could draw a line from B up to this point there, such that it's perpendicular so that's a right angle okay so what we can do here is we can say let's find this length let me call this point x okay we could find this length um, basically what we can do is we can use this big triangle so let's let's show you the big picture first what i'm thinking of doing is using this triangle a d and up to this point which I'll, i think i'll call it p and back to a again this triangle here if I use this triangle, I can find AD by knowing what the length from A, let's call this, um, let's call this P, AP and DP. If I know what a, AP is and then what DP is, I can use Pythagoras to find AD. Okay. Now, the, the key for me to finding what AP is, well, I know that AP, I know that AP is equal to AX plus XP. And I know XP is the same as BC, because this is like a rectangle. So XP is 350, 350 meters. As we know, that's 350 from there to there. So if I can find what AX is, I can add it to 350 and I find what AP is. And if I want to find what DP is, I can say that DP is equal to, well, it's 450 minus this length XP. Okay, so it's going to be 450 minus BX. Okay, and I can find BX, again, by using this triangle. I can find what BX is. Okay, um, I know this is 90 degrees because I drew this at 90 degrees to that. Okay, so I can work out now what BX and AX is using this triangle. How do I use this triangle? Well, I know that if this is 140 degrees, then this angle must be 40 degrees. As we mentioned before, this is like a north line. Okay, so, you know, that's going to be interior to that so that's 40 degrees so i can see from this triangle i can find ax and bx because i have an angle and a side and a right angle triangle i can use so kato so for ax let's consider ax that's opposite this angle okay and this is a hypotenuse so i can use sine i can say the sine of 40 degrees is equal to ax over 400 therefore ax is 400 times the sine of 40 degrees. I'll leave it like that for now. Uh, we'll round at the end. And similarly, BX, I can find what BX is. BX is adjacent to 40 degrees. So for BX, I can say that the cosine of 40 degrees is equal to BX over 400. So therefore, BX is equal to 400 times the cosine of 40 degrees. So if I know what AX and BX are, I can now find what AP and DP are. So I can say AP is equal to AX plus XP. So AP is equal to 400 sine 40 plus 350. And I can say that DP is equal to 450 minus AX, BX, sorry, which is 400 cosine 40. Okay, I don't, I'm not going to round these. I can leave these as they are. So therefore, I can say that AD is equal to the square root of, by Pythagoras, the sum of the squares of these two. So I'll have 400 times sine 40 plus 350 squared plus 
450 minus 400 cosine 40 all squared and that should give me hopefully the same answer as this let's see what happens so we have here the square root of so the square root of we're going to have in brackets 400 sine 40 um, plus 350 close that bracket square that plus and we're going to have in brackets 450 um, minus 400 this time cosine 40 close that bracket twice squared gives me exactly the same answer exactly the same answer okay so 623.863 623.863 dot 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 so therefore we can round it again as we said to 3sf 624 meters there's the answer to part b of this question so there's two different ways this is method one i think that's an easier method and it's kind of like a more you know following on from part a and here we have method two that's something that i'd probably think of if we hadn't been asked to find this angle in this bearing this might be something that would have come to my head first in that in this sense so that's also another method so there's different methods that we can use to answer this question and both of them are perfectly fine now for part c it says jono runs around the field from a to b and then from b to c from c to d and then from d to a all the way around so d to a as we just worked out uh, is 623.863 we'll just write it in a small exact form for now I always like to leave things more exact until the final answer. Then it says calculate the time Jono takes to run around the field. So we've got speed, we've got time, we got distance, we've got to find time. We know that speed is equal to distance over time, which means that time equals distance over speed. So we know the distance is equal to 400 plus 350 plus 450 plus 623. 0.863 altogether that adds up to 400 plus 350 plus 450 plus 623.863 623.863 that gives you 1,823.863, 1,823.863 meters, and we know that the speed is 3 meters per second, therefore the time is equal to 1,823.863 divided by 3, which gives you, divide this by 3, gives you 607.954. 607.954 that seconds so they want the answer in minutes so we know that uh, 60 times 10 is 600 so therefore we have 10 minutes so you've got 10 minutes and you've got what's remaining is 7.954 seconds which is eight seconds to the nearest second so it's 10 minutes eight seconds that's one way of of, of you know how many 60s fit into 607 there's 10 okay so we could do it by dividing if you if you're not sure you could say all right let's divide this by 60 it gives us 10 and something so we know there's 10 whole minutes so 10 times 60 is 600 and you see that there's 7.954 seconds remaining apart from that 600 seconds that we've already wrote, wrote in, in whole minutes and that's going to be eight seconds so that's how we answer such a question and that concludes question part c from this paper um, other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that should appear in this region here. Other questions which involve trigonometry can be found in the playlist in this um, section here. This IGCSE tri trig questions, um, a collection of you know past paper questions from that. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link over here. Okay, in the playlist um, and in the description below, you can also find links to um, other papers and AS papers and um, A-level papers. Also, topic-wise, you can find a link to an index that I've made for those various things. You can check out from the description below. Thank you for watching and see you soon.